Hey everybody, welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to carve some fat bottom mushroom men. I'm going to go over a couple different faces you can put on them and uh, how to get these guys done right. And then, uh, yeah, we're going to do this with one knife. I'll show you how you can use a, a V tool to make it a little bit easier on the fins, the gills, I should say, underneath the mushroom cap. But let's go ahead and just uh, jump right into it. So we're starting off with a four inch tall two inch by two inch block of American basswood. And there you can see it's just four inches long and it's two inches by two inches, right? I like working with these bigger blocks or something like this. It leaves a little more detail. You can see these are the exact size these guys came out of. And these are the two I've done already. And we're gonna go ahead and make a third right now. Two little different expressions and some fat bottoms right there that we'll show you how to do as well. So these guys worked out pretty well. I really like the, the fat little arms, the face, the wink on this guy. And I'll show you how to do these gills with a knife, but it is a lot faster with the V-Tool. So I'll show you how to do it with a knife and with the V-Tool. That way you got an option you can do it either way. And uh, yeah, we'll show you how to do multiple faces. And uh, I'll do one. And then uh, afterwards, I'll show you a little, about, a little bit about painting. We'll talk a little bit about that later, but uh, I've actually painted these in another video, so I'll probably direct you to that. But first off with the block, we're going to start going with the same size mushroom cap as we got in this other guy here. So we're just going to transfer our mark over. And that's about an inch and a quarter down, I would say. And we're just going to put that mark all the way around using our finger as a guide to keep us level in the same spot all the way around. And then we're going to go ahead and just start cutting out uh, corners on these. But first I'm going to get my my thumb guard forgot that okay so i've got a little bit more of hand wrap going on here in this video than i do normally i just got back from a carving event and uh, i used my knife a little bit differently now from some lessons i learned from roger stiegel so this is something i carved and you use the knife a lot differently than i have been carving something like that so i'm just going to try, try to get used to having more wrap on the hand see if i can get accustomed to it and uh, we're going to go and just jump right into this. All right. So we're going to start with some V cuts here on each of the corners. Just getting some depth in here. This is going to be the bottom side of the mushroom cap. And we're going to do this on all four corners. Just a couple of V cuts like so. Another one there. And a fourth on this corner. And then we're just going to go and deepen those cuts all the way across and bring this mushroom cap in. Just keep making some V cuts here, taking out deeper chunk and the same thing here. Just bringing some depth in here under what will be our mushroom cap along the top and the base of the mushroom will be on the bottom here. So I had a good time out in uh, Norwood, Missouri. I went out there for a uh, carving event and got to carve with Roger Stiegel. That was a lot of fun. Now I'm just taking a little bit here off the top, these corners here, sharp corners off of uh, the top of the mushroom cap. Just pulling those off a little bit to start putting a little bit of shape to the top. I got a chance to carve several characters while I was out there with Roger, learned a lot, and I think it was a fantastic experience. If anyone has a chance to do the same thing, I highly encourage you to take that opportunity and go carve with someone who's better than you at what it is that you're doing, right? That's how we learn, so we get better, so we progress. I'm just taking these uh, corners off at the bottom right now. It's splintering a little bit, but that's okay. I'm using that to my advantage to get a little bit more than I would normally on a little slice, just chipping it away at it. And that gives us a, yeah, kind of an octagon shape there. And now we're gonna go ahead and start bringing in more on these corners here right i'm going to take a little bit at an angle in the v cut and if you do this it's far easier than just going straight in through the middle so i do this corner here of that v cut and then on the top and i can bring that in towards the middle to open up that whole thing and then go in the middle to cut that v out and it's far easier to slice than it would be if i had just started going right up the side so i'm going to do the same thing here do this little corner from that first feet cut and bring it in and then from the left side and then a little bit more and that gets us in 
We do the same thing, just working our way around, enlarging that channel underneath it, what's going to be our mushroom cap. And by cutting like this, we make it easier on ourselves. We're not pressing in hard. We're not straining. Uh, we're going to keep control of the blade the whole time while we cut and have no issues. And just keep providing a little bit of depth, like I said, not a little bit, a lot of depth underneath this mushroom cap. Just roughing things out. We got a good start here. Now we're just taking off the top edge here, that hard corner along the top, bringing it in a little bit, because we're gonna start to round off the top of this mushroom cap here. And we're gonna bounce back and forth between rounding off the top of the mushroom and providing depth underneath our mushroom cap back and forth here. Just take your time. These cuts, you're not, not in any rush on these cuts. With those very basic steps down, we're gonna start to try to round off the top here from the bottom of the top of the mushroom. And then from the base here, we're gonna round this into the mushroom top. Take a look at the overlay on the left and you'll see kind of what I'm talking about here. So I'm gonna start on the base of the mushroom, bringing this in up underneath our cap. I'm just gonna work my way around, smoothing this out, making this less of a square and more of an oval as we go. And uh, just bringing out some of the meat of this to get uh, the shape that we're going for. And I'm gonna keep that overlay on the left up for a while. And that's what, that's what our finished product looks like, right? I don't know what it's gonna look like yet when it's done. I don't even know what face I'm gonna pick yet, but on the left there, you get the sneak peek. You can see what's going on, what we're going for. So I'm just gonna, like I said, just gonna keep taking out things here on the left. Just keep taking out the meat of this on each corner and then taking a little bit off the corners of that and chipping it out, just working my way down. A little bit at a time. I'm using just a, a regular heavy rough out knife that I've got well stropped immediately before I started on this process. So it's a nice sharp knife and you can use any knife. I mean, really you can do this carving with a, uh, a utility knife if you had one. And then if you needed to strop, you just put in a new blade. You don't need anything fancy to carve. One of these fixed knife blades like I've got here, this Helvey is nice, it's fantastic, but you don't absolutely have to have one to do this kind of carving, at least for this type of carving. All right, just uh, taking off, like I said, those corners. I'm going around the middle now after I've worked everything in and bringing that in. And we got pretty good shape going there. So let's uh, round off the bottom now here start bringing that base in a little bit and making this block more cylindrical in shape as we go rather than being blocky, right? Got those corners off. Let's go ahead and take off these saw marks now on the base here. Those saw marks, I've said before in other videos, but just in case you haven't heard it, <clears throat> will take paint and stain differently than the surface of the wood that's touched a blade. So by the nature of carving something with a blade it affects the wood and burnishes it slightly and uh, a blade, blade mark with a, uh, a saw is not the same and so the cuts that I've made with the blade of the knife are going to soak up stain more evenly than a saw mark will and the same with paint so you want to make sure that every surface of your carving has been touched by that blade of the knife and that you leave no surface untouched. That way you have a nice smooth finish and it looks similar. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing here. Up on the top, we'll take away those saw marks as well. And uh, I'm gonna work on these corners here first here a little bit because I don't like how rough that looks. I'm gonna clean it up a little bit here. I'm getting that angle under the mushroom cap there. You can see on the left how it comes down at almost a uh, 45 degree angle there. We're just going to go ahead and put that angle in right now while we're here and smooth that line out because we've got most of our under the cap roughing out done. We'll leave a little bit of meat there as we go along so that we can take stuff out for the face and take stuff out for the back as we determine where the back needs to be and how we need to round it up from the butt. So I'm just uh, trying to make it even, right? So take a little off the bottom here to make it more symmetrical as it goes around and clean that line up a bit. So we've got a good spot to start on the rest of this with. 
Let's take out those hard lines in the corners here. We want to leave ourselves plenty to keep working with as we move forward, but we want to get that clean line here. That's what we're going for, just to, to work out the underside of this mushroom cap. Just get that middle where we want it, and then we'll worry about the top and the bottom here after this portion. Now, I've said it before, I'll say it again. Take your time. You don't have to rush on this. You can pause the video. You should not be carving as quickly as I am if you're new. And if you're not new, you're probably carving a lot faster than I am. So, all right, let's start taking the meat off the top here. Start in the corners and then work your way down that side a little bit. Nice and easy. Next corner and working our way down the side. Next corner as well. Same thing, just doing it over again. I tell you, I love these little fat bottom mushroom guys. My kids love them. They are so cute. And uh, when you get them painted up right and they look fantastic, they're just really neat things to have on a desk or on a bookshelf so remember uh while you're doing this clean up your cuts as you go take off those hard edges right if it's, if it's too far in the corners like i'm doing right here let's go ahead and take it off so you can start to make this thing less square and more oval in shape and you're gonna do it in angles because you're using a flat blade right so it's gonna go square to octagon shaped <laughs> to oval as you carve off more and more i'm just taking off a little bit there next corner next corner and then i'll come in here and start doing some pairing cuts once i get it more even here a few more cuts here and then we'll start trying to take that rough saw mark off the top of the carving here it's looking pretty good all right so i'm gonna take these pairing cuts and just come in here like so now I got that left thumb down low, right? So I'm not in danger of catching that left thumb because it's down here under where the blade's gonna be coming. So keep that in mind. Keep your thumb out of your way, your blade. You don't want to have bring the knife to the thumb. You want to bring the knife over the thumb. And I'm just gonna chip away here along the top of this carving and bring those saw marks right there off and leave that nice smooth blade line instead. Just like so. Nice and easy. Another fast. Hit the camera there. Sorry about that. All right, now I can see I've got some saw marks left right there in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and get those off with a push cut and start taking off more of these sides here. Bring it up towards. That new top that we made there. Nice smooth cuts. Don't take off too much. If you feel like you're taking off too much, take off a little bit less. If you can't do what I just did in one cut, do it in two. Take three if you need to. Don't work too hard on this. Make it easier on yourself. All right, so we got a good angle there now. You should always be looking at your carving too to determine whether or not your knife is cutting the way that you need it to, right? So we're gonna take a look at this. We're looking at our, our lines here. You see along the top here, it's not carving exactly the way I want to. It looks like it's tearing a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can get a good spot where I can show you that. I need to drop this knife again, I think. Let me just take off this angle here. That's providing another, another facet here along the top right like so but you can see there's these lines here and I remove right there and those are cut lines that I left in there let me take those off I'm gonna show you those tear marks here in a moment as well I think I need to drop this knife but I want to make sure I show it to you so you can see what to recognize so when you getting close see, see here there's little lines right there. That's where the wood's tearing rather than cutting. So I'm gonna pause the video here while I go and strop this knife. And that'll make sure I can take care of that. Okay, knife is now restropped. And so I can get back to carving and we don't have any problem. Now it's going nice and smooth. And you should be doing the same thing. Pay attention to your knife and let it tell you when it needs to be stropped. If you see it tearing rather than cutting, that's a good time to stop and pause what you're doing. 
So just drop your knife, get it sharpened back up real well, and then come back to your project so you can finish up and have it nice and smooth. And this thing's cutting a little bit better now, smoother, easier, taking off these chunks. And right now what I'm doing here is I'm doing a nice upsweep kind of cut. I'm putting a little bit of a curve to this mushroom cap. And you can see that in the overlay on the left, kind of going in at the bottom, swooping in and out at the top. And that provides that nice mushroom cap shape like so. And I really like this kind of shape. Now we're just going to take off some of those rough spots here, these sharp edges and these corners a little bit. That's looking pretty good. And clean up underneath the top of this mushroom cap a little bit right here. Here soon we're working on the base and we'll be on the home stretch. You may notice some new study sticks I've got in the background. All three of those on the right there are Harold Inlow study sticks. And uh, I'm still, of course, learning the craft as well. I'm really interested in caricature carving, so I'm going to be uh, doing more and more of that in my spare time as I try to practice faces. Okay, now before we get ahead of ourselves, we're going to work on the arms and legs here of our little mushroom baby. And <clears throat> you can see on these guys, it's a pretty simple design. We're going to put, with our pencil here, some lines to dictate where our feet are going to go. And take your time here to, to draw it out right and take a look on the carving. Where can I get the right spot to have enough wood to put this at? We're going to go on this side, I think, right here. And we're just going to draw in our feet. I'll go ahead and speed this process up a little bit. And you, of course, don't have to focus too much on what I've drawn. You can focus on the overlay on the left to see what we're going for as well. So take a look at that overlay, compare it to the drawing as needed, and uh, that's what we're going to go for. And we're going to start blocking this in and tracing it out with our rough out knife here. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate the carving here. And I'm going to be holding the knife still mostly and mostly just rotating the carving here. People cut themselves often when they lose control of the knife, right? And that's usually when they're pushing too hard on the knife and it breaks free of the wood and slides. So here I'm being very careful, slow and methodical, and I'm rotating that wood slightly, slowly, and keeping that knife mostly still, right? So I'm not endangering my hand as much as others might. It's all about control and keeping control of the blade, knowing where the blade's gonna end up. That's what keeps you from getting cut. On this section here, I'm going to be moving the knife more as I come around. And if I lose control there, I'm just going to go right down to the mat. This is, a, this is a craft mat, so it's okay. Again, just tracing out those lines, putting a cut along the edges of all of it. I'm probably going in about maybe an eighth of an inch, not too deep quarter of an inch, between an eighth and a quarter, three sixteenths, let's say. And just tracing out that line on both the arms and the feet as we go. So I addressed the three study sticks on the left, but I didn't address the one in the middle there. That smaller one is a Gerald Sears one for ears. And that's a pretty neat little study stick too. And I got that one at the um, Peter Engler's Design Shop down in Branson, Missouri. When I was down near there for that carving meet up the hill and holler seminar in norwood all right still just tracing out those feet nice and easy putting that cut in like i said about three sixteenths of an inch maybe a quarter in some spots just trace the line out of the feet and we're going to then start blocking it all in a little bit at a time as we go once we get these lines carved in all right, and I think that's probably it. Now, the butt on the back here, we're not going to draw that in. We're just going to take care of that later. We're going to just work on the front right now. So <clears throat> to do this, I'm going to do some nice deep cuts here. We're just going to block this in. So I'm coming straight in for the side, and I'm putting a nice deep stop cut in right here. I mean deep right there, see? Knife is stuck in there. Pull that out. I'm going to do another one right here, not at the contour of the foot, just straight in. And I can put that contour in later, right? I'm just getting a deep cut in right here on that corner. So I can cut that corner out. And I'm going to pull down with my left thumb on the knife to cut that out. And now I got that started. 
I do the same thing here. And that gets my depth here started. And I can just do sweeping cuts or stop cuts straight down here and start bringing that out. And now I can kind of start to give contour to that side of the foot after I got some of this out, right? Because all we're doing here is just removing the meat that we can around those feet and this arm. We can round it off as we go. We're just taking out, taking out some meat here. A little bit at a time. And we're going to bring that line here up around the bottom half of the arm as we go as well. You can reverse the knife, get some of the stuff off the bottom, start rounding it off now if you want. But you can kind of keep working that. And uh, this is the angle I want here. Rotate your carving as you need to to find the right angle to, to do this carving in, stopping along the bottom side of that arm. And you can come in from the bottom side if you want to, or the top. Or we're going to go to this other side here. Do the same thing, a stop cut on the right side of the foot, and then underneath the left arm, another stop cut right there. And then carving up to it, take that chip out. And that gives us a spot to start from. So we can start working our way down and up around the bottom half of the arm from here. So just bringing that out. I'm keeping that left thumb down, down out of the way and just choking up on that knife to bring it out. Well, bring that contour of the foot around here. Put a stop cut there and then carve into it. Take your time. No need to be in a rush. Never rush with a knife. This knife is sharp. You don't want to cut yourself. That's an expensive doctor's bill to get something stitched up. So take your time. I find that people cut themselves often when they <clears throat> lose patience and they stop paying attention. Look at the depth we got here on the right side. We got pretty good depth. We're going to go ahead and put a stop cut right here between those feet and then V cut to provide some contour between the feet. And you can see that in the overlay on the left, what we're going for. Right, like so, a little V-cut between the two. All right, and we got some good depth starting the feet, so let's go ahead and start in this portion up here. And it's hard to get in here with the mushroom cap, so what we're going to do is we're going to be pulling this out a little bit at a time. We're going to put a stop cut here along the top of that foot, and then a stop cut along the other side of that arm, and then we're going to carve out to it and cut out that chunk like so. That's a good spot to start. We just deepen it up and widen it a little bit, and then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. A stop cut along the top of the foot. And a stop cut along the inside of the right arm. And then we just uh, take that little chip out. And then we do it again and widen it. And take that one out. And that gives us room to get in there. And it shows us what depth we, ne we need to go for. So we can start carving some out of the middle too. And now we're just going to be doing the same thing up the side of this arm. Take a little bit of time and just bring some, from that depth up around the inside of that arm from our belly here. And take your time. You can come in at this angle here and uh, come out along the top of the arm. And that'll get up most of this right there with one little swipe. We can do that again if we only get a little more depth. Like so. And that provides a good angle there. You can see we got a lot of depth on that arm. And uh, we're going to do the same thing on the other side if we can. Right there, trying to come out with the blade, the tip at the top or most, the uppermost portion of the arm where we're ending the arm at. And just do it a couple times to get the depth you want. And we can worry about cleaning up that curvature of the arm here afterwards, like so. Bringing that back down here and taking out that excess. And we'll round the arms off here in a little bit. Clean up those cuts along the outside edges of the arm, make them look pretty. Right now, we're just getting that depth we need. Working that belly down. We're going to make him a fat little guy, but we're not going to give him that big of a belly. All right, so let's take out this section here between the feet. We can do a uh, stop cut along the right foot, one along the left foot as well nice and deep there take your time and then we'll undercut that a little bit 
and then we'll do it again to get a little bit deeper a few times and we do it a few times and then stop cut the edges again if we need to and that piece should just kind of pop out like so not too difficult not too hard and we've got some good rough shape to the arms and the uh, feet and oh we didn't do the other side of the arm here so let's go ahead and take care of that on the side of the left arm just taking out the meat getting that out of there a little bit at a time for those of you who follow me on instagram you were able to keep track of what i did out in norwood when i was at the carving seminar see the kind of bus and uh, the wizard i did and uh, it's pretty neat stuff make sure you follow me there over on instagram keep we can keep in contact with one another and you can see the kind of things that i'm working on and what i got planned on next just gonna go ahead and put a little depth here between that hand and that foot right there but yeah you can see what i'm working on you can see what i've got planned next and uh if you want to ask questions i'm more than willing to answer questions and if i see that you followed me and i can see wood carvings on your profile you can be very certain that i'm going to go ahead and follow you back because i like to expand my circle of wood carvers so i can see what everyone else is doing see what people are focused on see what kind of carvings people are doing it's a lot of fun for me i'm just bouncing around right now cleaning up cuts and uh defining more the edges of the feet here getting some of this smoothed out between the two feet cleaning up those lines and smoothing out the belly a little bit through here there we go i'm also on facebook and threads so if you uh prefer those for your social media you can follow me on those as well and the links of those are all in the uh page information all right so we've got uh we got pretty far on this guy use that stiff bristle brush to wipe off all the fuzzies and we're gonna start uh rounding off those arms and the feet i think all through there so <clears throat> pages are a grain direction i was about to go from the wrong direction here but uh grain's running up and down through here so if we carve this direction we're going to wind up tearing and breaking off that arm so we don't want to do that so we're going to carve from the bottom up so that's why i'm this paring cut like so because carving with the grain makes easy smooth butter like cuts if you carve against the grain you're going to wind up seeing tearing and at first if you're just roughing things out that's not a problem but when you get to this more detailed stuff where you're smoothing things out that's very much a concern there we go and same thing around here we're just smoothing out rounding out the underside of this arm this is not a real detailed arm right he's like a little mushroom you know fat little <clears throat> marshmallow kind of body like fella you know so rounded fat arms no hands nice and simple kind of shape and it can be a little oblong can be a little funky looking that's just fine for what we're going for we're going for a cartoony like character right so i was a little tearing going from that direction so we're gonna bring that in put a little more depth underneath this arm here because i can't get uh, as much roundness as i want to and the depth it was we're just going to deepen it a little bit and then we'll shave that stop cut off Cleaning it up a little bit. And it looks a bit better. We can do more. If something looks okay, don't leave okay. Go for better. Right? If you mess up, you can just start again. You get another piece of wood. Wood's not that expensive. That's how you get better. Don't settle for okay. Go for better each time. And the more often you do that, the more often you go for better, the better you're going to get. You're going to be forcing yourself to improve six months ago i was nowhere near the carver i am now and that's because i keep practicing keep trying i'm carving a little bit every single day there we go just taking a little bit more out from underneath this arm here cleaning up all these cuts the more time you spend cleaning up cuts the better off it looks use that brush to wipe those things out of there and we're getting a good pile of chips over there now okay just cleaning up. Just cleaning up. Let your carving dictate for you where you need to be cleaning up at. If you're trying to follow cut by cut, even then, 
you're going to be cleaning up differently than I am because your wood grain is going to be working differently and you're going to have different results. Round off the underside of this left arm here a little bit, going with the grain. So that's nice and easy. Make that look nice and pretty right through there. Once we get done with the arms and feet here, we're going to go around the back side and put in a nice fat bottom. There we go, deepen that up a little bit more. And that's why you leave a good bit of wood there, so you have the option of going back and deepening things necessary. The option of removing more wood, because you left a little bit originally when you're roughing out, right? You don't want to go straight for details right off the bat. You want to rough things in and then go in and detail things so you can adjust as needed. Clean up all these rough, terrible looking cuts along the edge, outer edges of the feet. So at that carving seminar, the way that works is <clears throat> you pick one of the two carvers that they had and uh, it was Van Kelly or Roger Stiegel. And I chose Roger. And then you spend the weekend carving some of his rough outs and uh, every hour or so you get some time to sit right next to Roger while he goes over your carving, shows you what you might want to do next. And he can either carve on your piece for you and to show you, or he can carve on a separate stick. Uh, I wanted to work on caricature eyes while I was there. And I gave Roger a spare stick I had, and he showed me a bigger eye, exactly how he did it and what he did. And uh, then when I went back to my seat at the table, I was able to replicate that eye quite quite a lot easier than I would have had been able to before having had that firsthand experience of someone showing me step by step what they do and how they do it so it was really a great experience and if anyone is really wanting to push forward with their carving and get into more detailed work than than like a little fat bottomed mushroom man then uh, that's definitely something you should be looking into and I highly encourage it it was a wonderful experience for me the people I met there were fantastic and it was a lot of fun all right, so we got the arms here all rounded off. Same for the feet. That's looking pretty good. So we'll do the face here in a little bit. But first, let's get around here to the back. Let's curve this bottom here out. Because we're a little too fat along the bottom of the front here. Let's bring that in along the side as well. And along the right side as well. And we'll work our way to the back and we'll put our butt in. We want to have a nice fat bottom, right? To do that, we got a lot of wood here in the back already. So we're going to leave most of this here and we're going to carve a V notch right in the middle of the bottom. And then uh, we'll be able to smooth things out from that and around that. So take a look at this butt here. And you can see there's a lot of small cuts around that to curve it out a lot, right? And then it, uh, it goes in along the top of the butt up the back. So we're going to do that as well. So we're going to start right in the middle, and we're going to put a V-cut right here. So I'm going to do a straight cut first, right there to get some depth. You can see that's pretty deep, right? I probably got well, almost the whole blade in there, probably half it right there, right in the middle. And then I'm going to do a V-cut into that line from the, from the right side, and then we'll come into it from the left side as well. Try to make that notch as even as we can. And uh, I can see it's off a little bit. So I'm going to try to clean that up. And rotate if you need to see how you got it. And we'll bring that V cut up a little bit higher. There. Like so. It's a nice tall cut that gradually goes in deeper. And now we're just rounding off this bottom. Nice small cuts to round off each of the cheeks. We can deepen this V cut further back in there. Right? A little bit more. The more depth you have here, the more shadows, the more interplay between the shadows and the, the lines of the wood, it'll really bring it out. All right, so let's round this off in here as, as far back as we can. Make that slope nice and long. That way when he's sitting there, you can see the cheeks go a little far back in there. That'll make him look very developed. Just take your time. Reevaluate and stop every now and then look at your carving, see what you might need, and then go back to it. We got a good butt cheeks there, but now let's work on the, the top here. And we're going to smooth a little bit of this out, and then along the top of the butt, from the top of the butt, the back of the head, 
we want to have a sweeping cut going in. We want that butt to stick out. So we want to sweep in to the top of the butt and out up there along the top, kind of like uh, the slope of a hill, right? So from the, from, the, from the back of the neck, it's going to come down and then out to the butt. So in and then up to the neck, in and then up to the neck, right? Pulling more wood out there to make that butt stick out. That gives the, uh, the cuteness factor that people love. Because they go, oh my gosh, look at that butt. <laughs> Song cue for uh, the Generation X folks. All right, so we're just going to keep on cleaning things up as we go. Making that line there underneath the top of that mushroom cap. And then we're going to start looking at the face here momentarily. But I'm just going to deepen that some more. Why not? Let's make that butt really stand out, huh? The more it stands out, the better in a lot of instances, I think. And round that off here to the side, too. To make it look more realistic, more natural through there. There we go. Got a good line there coming from the butt on up. We're going to round this over here as well. The butt doesn't come straight to the side. It rounds out, right? So, a little off the sides here. A little bit off the other side as well. And that puts some nice shapeliness to his posterior. To his derriere. To his gluteus maximus. <laughs> and it's really starting to come together. Now we're just undercutting the bottom of that a little bit around there that way when it's sitting a little bit of shadow underneath the edge as it goes up under that carving smoothing that out all right so he's looking pretty good we've got some good lines there going up from the butt got a little shadow there i like that so let's start working on the face here um <clears throat> We're going to need our pencil, and we're going to be drawing a face, and you can go with different styles of face, whatever kind of style you want. I'm going to have an overlay of three different uh, faces on the left there, so pick one you like, or do something different. I'm going to go with the one on the far right, a big left, a big right eye, I should say, and a smaller left eye. Just drawing those on, and underneath the eyes, we'll do a, a little smirk, right? A little bit higher on the one side than the other. A little line coming down the side there. Same thing over here. And now we're going to go ahead and carve that out. Before we do that, I forgot to take a little bit off this bottom edge over here. Curve that in so we get that shadow effect like I wanted. Forgot to do that one side, so just fixing that right now while I got the time. And then we'll go ahead and carve out our eyes. Now I'm just going to use the very tip of the knife and I carve a straight line here. Curved line, I should say, along the mouth. And then a stop cut at each end. And then I'm going to carve out this bottom up to that line. Chip on one side. Chip in the middle. And then a chip on the end. And now <clears throat> I'm going to round out that top lip down to it. Just slightly. And clean, spend a little time clean that up. If you have some fuzzies there, get those off. Use the knife, clean it up, make it look good. And now we'll go ahead and carve out these eyes. We're just going to trace them out first. Rotating the carving, keeping that knife blade mostly still. Or curve the knife if you need to. You can move the knife too. Whatever you do, just be careful. Take your time. And there we go. And these eyes will be touching in the middle. So we want to make sure that when we're carving the insides of the eyes out, that we still provide a little curvature to where the two eyes meet, right? So we got to pay attention to that. Coming right around to that line that we got there. All right, now we're going to be chipping out all the edges here of the eyes. A little bit at a time. So, start on the left. Just cut that out and curve it up and along the top. And pay attention to your grain direction. There's certain directions you might not want to carve through. And just uh, think about that, like that right there. I'm getting out more than I might have wanted to, but 
thickness in the inside of that eye, I want to have more slope there going down to the other eye. That's what I was talking about. So, do the same thing on the bottom. Clean up those edges as best you can. And we'll do the same thing on this other eye, the left eye. Providing some contour, some shape, right? To that eye. And just pull out that last chip right there, which will be the last little bit. And then we'll just spend a little time cleaning up these eyes. Clean up those edges, make them look good. The more time you take here, the better carving will look. So don't be in a rush. Take a few moments. Make some stop cuts where you need to. Clean those little chips and fuzzies out. Get your brush out if you need to. Define that line between those eyes a little bit more. If you think that it might need a little bit more depth, put a deep little V-channel in there between the two of them. Like that. Right there. Maybe cut that little tip out there. And these eyes are going to look great. Look at that. That's fantastic. All right, this guy turned out pretty well. Now we're going to start working on the other side of the mushroom cap. The gills, they call them, on the mushroom. We got the butt all done. So let's work on those gills. And you can see on this guy here how we've done those gills. And they are just little channels, little V channels along there. And you can use a V tool to do that. So I'm going to get a couple V tools down so I can show you. Take a look, if you will, at the left. And we're going to pop up an overlay of what we're going for here. And a V tool like this can help get those lines. So we want to have different depths and different widths to these little channels here. So I'm going to use this knife. And I'm going to do a couple here to show you. Just a in at a 45 degree from the left and at a 45 degree from the right and we cut out a little v-channel and then do another one right next to it and you can do this with a knife it just takes a while to take more time to do it with a knife with the v-tool you'll get through a lot faster but you'll have cleanup to do afterwards because there'll be little fuzzies left so there's three quick channels right and you want to do deeper ones and more shallow ones and knock out a whole bunch here Look at the overlay, you can see the kind of randomized pattern I've gone for, right? Do a little deeper one over here. Get a little more depth on it. Like so. And we'll just randomize that as we go around. And the V-tool, it's easier to get the initial cuts in. But after you get done, you have to go around and clean them all up. Now, you don't want these to be uniform. You want some going halfway through, some going all the way through. Like this one's halfway, and this one's all the way. You want to randomize that. Makes it look more natural. So I'm going to use this V tool here and show you. We can do some real deep ones with this V. And it can be quicker. But you wind up having to clean up more after you get done with the V tool. Because there's a little, like that little curly cue there is left on that one. And if you use the smaller ones, which... Are good for randomizing. You get a lot of those little curly cues. I'm going to do a few big ones for this V. And like I said, you can do this all with a knife. I showed you how to do that. But for the sake of uh, time, I'm going to use this V tool here. I need a smaller one now. And get some more lines in there. Now with a large V tool, you can simply use less of the V tool. Well, don't push in as deep. And you'll get smaller, shallower cuts. Or if you got a second V-tool, you can use that if it's easier for you. And uh, just randomize this. Just doing different depths and uh, different patterns, different spaces between them. So work my way around. And I'll switch to a little small V-tool and try to fill up everything that's left over with as many marks as I can. This is a little number 12, three millimeter. Some people call it a veiner. And just try to get as many of these in as I can. I'm trying to fill up every little bit of it. The more you fill it up, the better it looks. And just take your time here. This is a, a time-consuming, tiresome kind of portion. But it can really improve the look of your mushroom because uh, these little fins look very natural. And you can see what I was talking about, those curly cues popping up there. Got to take a knife to them and free them all up. 
But if you do this all with a knife, you don't have anything to clean up afterwards. Versus like those little curly cues there. So we're just going to keep working our way around a little bit at a time. Putting in as many of those lines as we can. Making it look as detailed as we can. And taking our time. Because that's what sets a good carving apart from a great carving, right? That's what we're going to go for. Always want to go for better than we did before. See, when I knock those off, you can see that little fluff is still up there. Attached to the top. We'll clean that up with a knife once we get done. Just keep working your way around. We got that pretty well done there. So now we're going to take a knife. We're going to clean up that stuff. You can brush off as much as you want to with this brush, like I was showing you here. But you're still going to have those things there along the inside line. You can just chip them each out. Even if you do this with a V-tool, you're still going to want to go on back with a knife to clean that up. And you can clean up like this, coming up from the top and freeing each one individually. Or you can take a little bit off with a, with a slicing action, a little bit of the height off of these uh, gills coming in like this. And if you do that, you can get them a little bit easier, but you're taking a little, height, a little bit of height off the gills, which is... Now, I don't really like the look as much, but it's a bit quicker for this portion. So it's up to you what you do. It's up to you which, which method you want to use, whether it's a V-tool or a knife, and how you want to clean it up if you use the V-tools. But uh, there we go. We got this guy pretty much done. That's fantastic. Got a good shape at the bottom, and we're taken care of. And there he is all finished up and scrubbed down. Now, I've done a painting video using a fab on a mushroom guy called painting 101 and uh, i show you guys how to paint this guy from start to finish so i'm not going to duplicate that here i'm just going to direct you to go to painting 101 and watch that video and you'll see my texturing and uh, dry brushing and antiquing that i do on these guys from start to finish so check that out don't forget to like the video subscribe to the channel and thank you guys so much for stopping by